for any artist, the dream is to make a living off of your art. And we live in a time where that seems more accessible than ever before with social media. However, the problem with social media is that it was not designed with artists trying to make a living off of the platforms. And in fact, the, the design philosophy of social media apps like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc., are harmful for the fundamental art making process. Social medias were not designed to have millions upon millions of artists making livings off their artwork. It was designed to have a hierarchy. The hierarchy is used to give people the sense that if I just keep posting and if I just keep at it, I will eventually get there. I'll get to the follower count I want to get to. So, funnily enough, if you want to be a successful artist using social media, you have to use social media more than you make art, in theory. It is this very idea where social media shows itself to be fundamentally bad for artists. Two ways in particular. The first way, it takes all of your time. As much time as it, it can take from you, it will take. This time that you're losing out on is much better spent thinking and letting your brain rest and being mindful and present. All those things help your art more than going on social media ever could. The second way is how social media does not promote community building, rather it promotes audience building. It wants you to maintain a one-way parasocial relationship with your followers, again, to help maintain the idea that you need to climb up the hierarchy to get somewhere in life, versus the idea of establishing a community where everyone is on the same footing, at the same table, and has equal voices and thus help each other out with ideas and feedback and just all around being supportive for each other. In this video, I want to take a look at how those two things help and benefit the art making process and the artist in general, and then in turn see how social media detracts from those things and hinders those things and thus makes it more difficult to make effective, original, new, exciting, fresh, and fulfilling artworks. Social media reduces our ability to generate new ideas by constantly vying for our time. Why is this bad for creativity? That is because boredom, stillness, and mindfulness generate brain activity that will lead to novel thought. There are some studies out there that kind of show a correlation between boredom and creativity. However, what I've learned through these, reading these studies is that boredom is a lot more of a nebulous thing than we come to realize. And the direct correlation between boredom and creativity doesn't necessarily come from just sitting around being bored or being at work and suffering because uh, it's so boring, but it's about those moments where you know, you're doing something kind of mundane, like ironing clothes, you know, maybe you're planting some plants in some soil, just something that's quiet, you know, and you're, you're engaged, your body's engaged with this, but your mind's not fully engaged. And then in those moments you daydream and it's that daydreaming where creativity and new ideas are spawned out of. I'm the type of person that has YouTube and music and just everything on all the time. Um, so recently I've tried to make little things that I do for myself, like moments of stillness and quiet, like um, when I'm just waking up or you know, doing basic self-care things. Um, I don't know if you want to include this part or not, but um, I recently have been going through some mental health things and dealing with a lot of things with like, you know, depression, anxiety, um, concentration and attention issues. So, um, yeah, so moments of quiet and stillness for me, uh, just feel really loud. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if that like makes sense, but they feel so still that it's like uncomfortable. I've realized lately is that, you know, giving yourself, uh, if, if you're uncomfortable in like stillness and quiet, then it's probably something that you need more of. I would like to talk about an experiment I did 
<clears throat> the other day, like two weeks ago at this point, I swear, a while ago, an eon ago, <clears throat> where uh, I sat and I looked out of my window, okay? I sat on the couch, I faced the window, I didn't have any music, I didn't have my phone, I didn't have nothing. I just did that for about 15 minutes. And you know what I found? Was that uh, when I was looking out the window, my thought process had begun to kind of ease a little bit. It wasn't, it didn't feel as high strong as it typically did. Uh, I would just kind of relax and the world would kind of soften. And then when I kind of felt like my brain needed some engaging, I just looked at whatever was around, you know, a tree, several trees, the road, the cars passing by, the grass, the neighboring houses. I began to, you know, kind of think about these things and look at them and ask questions about them and just kind of not necessarily make up stories, but kind of try and fit everything into a context like this tree. I, long, I wonder how long this tree has grown here. I, long, I wonder who planted this tree. You know, like what is this? What is well, what is all this, you know, about? And so this is the kind of thought that I'm talking about where you just let your brain rest and let it do its thing. And I found that I was generally more inquisitive, positive, um, interested in my environment. And there was nothing trying to pull my attention one way. I was just kind of free to observe and think about what I wanted to think about. See, these elements of telling stories or, you know, telling stories to ourselves or finding pieces of a story in our world around us, you know, that's creativity. That's honestly one of the fundamental tenets of creativity is storytelling and world building. So I want to point this out that this limitation I set on myself, you know, to just look out the window, it was one, relaxing. Two, good for my mind. It felt like a, like a needed break from all the stimuli I had put myself through that day. And third, uh, I've noticed that I was just generally a bit more creative. Now this is a anecdotal experience. This is just a informal one-time sort of experiment. You know, at least the moment when I was like, this is gonna be the experiment. But I found that I, I just kind of remembered some of these words in that moment, a little, or at least a little after the moment, where I was just thinking, you know, creativity uh, breeds from limitation. You know, it's it, it's like limitation where we get creative. You know, with whatever resources we have around us, we we figure out new and novel ways to use them. So now we live in a world where everything's at our fingertips. Any kind of media we would like to see. Any product we'd like to purchase, any anything we need is just to click away. You know, any information we need to click away. So when we have all these options, it gets so overwhelming to be creative because you have all these options. But I found that when you limit yourself to just a couple things, it's a lot easier to work with those things and to, to use those things creatively than if you had access to every single thing around you. There's a quote from art critic Jerry Saltz from his book, How to Be an Artist, on chapter 28 titled, Look Hard, Look Openly. He says, quote, Looking openly means allowing yourself to access new sources of visual interest. Practice this openness and the world will grow larger and richer around you. Looking openly gives you agency, the power to become responsive to every square millimeter of what you're seeing. See, this is what I'm kind of hitting on with this idea of looking out the window, where we, and limitation is where you have only so much to work with, you, you, you begin and tr kind of train yourself to really study these seemingly mundane things, right? Things we kind of take for granted every single day. You know, whether it be interesting architecture or trees, you know, or just flowers or various plants around us, we kind of just treat these like riffraff almost, like in our mind. You know, they're just kind of over there and I just pass through it. But when you're forced to engage with it, they become new. They become more interesting. They, you have to kind of read it, you know. You have to kind of then swim in your environment when you start to look at these things. Every tree is its own unique tree, and it's kind of overwhelming. Every single plant is its own plant, 
Every bed of grass is its own bed. Every house has a story and a, and a person or family that lives within it. And then our brains just get so interested in these stories. And this is, again, where creativity comes from. This is what creativity is. This is how, this is just a, also just a method where you can practice creativity. And I highly recommend that when you're done watching this video or say even right now, if you wish, you have agency. Uh, you take a moment, take 15 minutes and just stare at your window and just kind of note what you see, what you think, how you feel, you know, take note of those things. Even write them down when you're done. When you're finished with that exercise, just write, write down what you noticed. I think that as someone who identifies as a maximalist and likes just lots of, lots of stimulation and busyness and, um, things that are at like a hundred percent saturation sometimes not sometimes all the time you still need those moments of calm and relaxation and of just you know being with yourself which a lot of people don't do nowadays because when you're with yourself you're with your phone i guess it's just kind of nice to be by myself and listen to like what's going on in my head and if I'm like outside and also like having a smoke, it's like a nice relaxing time. Um, in general, it's just like a very like positively neutral moment in my life, generally. It also just clears, clears the head quite nicely because then you can just go back to doing whatever you were doing with, you know, like bit of emptiness in your head but like not bad kind of emptiness kind of like the kind of tiredness figuratively the kind of tiredness that you get after a nice long swim or a nice long run through um IOP which is intensive outpatient program for like <laughs> mentally ill people <laughs> sorry um, and they talk a lot of DBT there. Do you know what DBT is? Uh, DBT is called Dialectic Behavior Therapy, and it is a well-known mental health thing. Some therapists specialize in DBT, most don't because most just like to talk and not give any constructive things. But one of the biggest parts of DBT is mindfulness and what you're describing the like moment of stillness and moment of like quiet where you're just kind of like existing you're just present in the moment you're not worried about what fucking video you're gonna watch next you're not worried about um what's your next project gonna be you're just kind of existing that is mindfulness and it is something that definitely should be taught at school, in my opinion, how to be mindful, how to apply mindfulness to life in general. <laughs> so yeah, and I've only started doing it recently and it's where I started doing mindfulness more mindfully only recently. So now imagine how social media can impact this, right? When we are no longer forced to be limited, instead, when we go back to this open scape of information that is on social media, more specifically, I don't mean just like the internet. I mean a curated algorithm of information delivered to you, specific thoughts and ideas and beliefs that get delivered to you via your phone. And so I think it's important when when you're considering how social media impacts your life and how it impacts your mind, that you take notice of what you're actually looking at on social media. Does this help me in any way? Is this um, engaging my mind in a way where it's, I'm asking myself questions or am I just silently nodding and agreeing or fuming and getting upset because I don't agree with it? So when we're subject to this algorithm, in a way, we kind of lose the agency we have when it comes to being able to let our like choose what we want to pull apart and chew on and think about. 
when we replace quiet moments, waiting for the bus, you know, killing five minutes before our shift, something like that, you know, and we, we just kind of, you know, spend that time going on our phone, looking on Twitter or Instagram, and seeing something that could potentially change our mood for the day or change how we think about something but not in a way where it's like an epiphany but in a way where someone's presenting this to you and now you're questioning yourself and your beliefs this 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 thing where your brain is just eating one thing at a time and like either you know if you're a conscious media consumer you could reject it or accept it based on um you know information but i think for the most part people don't really engage with social media that way they don't they they just kind of look at things and consume them and then when those five minutes are up they go about their day but again i, I want to stress the importance of those quiet moments of the boredom of the still of the stillness and the mindfulness that comes from it because it's those things that allow us to generate novel ideas novel thought new ideas you know like that is it like it is from those quiet moments of modernity when we don't have a lot going on in front of us we have more room to think more room for our brain to even rest because another thing too is being on social media so much we don't let our brains rest or being on on youtube or you know watching tv or listening to podcasts or dare i even say music so much where we're not really freeing our mind to just rest like imagine if you worked out every single second of the day right or at least as often like let's say you're doing bicep curls as often as you were looking at social media and by the end of the day your fucking biceps they're not just tired they're hurting they're screaming for some rest. Hey, stop fucking doing the curls. I need to I need to rest. Now when you when you're at the end of your day and you're anxious and you're worried or some negative affliction is upon you, consider how much have you given your brain the rest it needs? Have you given yourself the time to just tune out of whatever social media or whatever world online world you're constantly engaged with. I want to kind of go back to this idea of the window, right? And think of it this way. Your worldview is integral to your art making process, right? Of course it is. And our worldview has nowadays been altered by media. And again, social media, and I'm going to keep saying the word social media. So you need to bear with me, but I'm, I, this is important stuff. This is very important. When we are only looking at social media to inform our worldview and not the world directly around us, we will buy into a narrative presented by someone else. And uh, I'm pretty sure none of these narratives are very positive. None of these are particularly hopeful unless there is a hope-pilled uh, internet community of very aggressively optimistic people out there who only share very hopeful articles that I have never seen before. For the most part, in my experience going online, everything's pretty has an underlying negativity to it. Um, you know, in general, right? I'm not just talking specifically about, or I'm talking about geopolitics, world events, stuff like that. It's very negatively focused, and that's again not to say there isn't bad, there aren't bad things happening in the world because there are. There's injustice in the world. There's there is all sorts of really horrible things happening to human beings and, and animals and and ecosystems and the planet and all that. But if that's all you're engaged with constantly or thinking about constantly and you're worried about these things, you're not looking at the world around you as is, you know. And again, there are these things are happening to people. So you could very well be impacted by something happening. For example, just the very first thing that comes to my mind at the time of making this is the Ohio train derailment that pumped a bunch of toxic chemicals in the air, right? If you're living with that around you, that is obviously gonna make you're gonna be worried you're gonna be stressed you're gonna be really wrestling with this right this is gonna be taking over your life okay or at least in some part or you're doing everything you can and your life's moving in accordance to this event that happened okay i'm not discounting that but if you're fortunate enough to be in an environment where nothing really bad is happening like nothing major maybe just some like small things 
uh, or relatively small things for that matter. If all that, if that's all that's happening to you in the uh, in your world and where you're living, in that way, you're very fortunate. And I would highly recommend keeping your eye on your own town and your own city. What's happening around you? Is your immediate life hell? Is it awful when you look out the window? Is everything just going to shit like it seems like it is? Or does it seem okay? You're like, yeah, yeah, it could be better, but it's not horrible. You know, like things could be improved, but you know, things are pretty good. And from my personal experience, that's kind of where I'm at in that uh, latter category of being like, yeah, you know, things are not perfect, but I do like generally where I am. Like, uh, there has been catalytic converter thefts, and people are, I've had my catalytic converter stolen twice, but that does that mean my town is rampant with uh, thieves and pillagers and awful people at every corner that are trying to hurt me? No. It just means that there's some people out here who see opportunities to make a quick buck, to make a quick buck, and who don't care about, um, you know, inconveniencing someone's whole day or week or month. Uh, and make it hard for them to get a paycheck, you know? So I want you to like, like consider this idea of that, you know, there is a world around you and it is happening independent of you, but you have a world around yourself that, you know, there's some things you can control and just focus on those things, okay? Focus on those things. I would like to give you an analogy, okay? I went to the park fairly recently. First of all, I really enjoyed my walk. That's another thing too, if you can, take some walks. Walks are really great. And just letting, and be, you know, be conscious during your walks. Don't just tune out with music, but like walk. And again, swim in your environment. But anyway, I was at this park and it had a lake. It's like, uh, surrounds a big lake, or I should say pond. Yeah, they have these decks, right? Uh, uh, little bridges that connect these decks that you can look in at out at the pond, okay? When I was looking at the pond, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is pretty, this is very nice. You know, there's, there's animals, there's birds. You know, I hear animals, I can see different plants and wildlife. I could see these, you know, I, I see beauty. But then when I look down, I just see trash, human trash just left there. You know, like people were treating the, the lake, sorry, the pond like a Starbucks cup repository. It started making me get upset. You know, I was getting upset looking at this trash, just reminded of how shitty people can be sometimes. And just like how people don't think about their environment or think about other people or um, the ecosystem or anything like that. Like it started to get upsetting. Then when I looked back out at the pond, I kind of just started to calm down a bit. Like, look, the whole lake's not filled with trash. Yeah, it sucks that there is trash in the first place and there are people who think like that. But for the most part, people have been pretty good about not flooding this particular pond with garbage. And so that kind of, that, that brought me back down. And I was calm again. I was like, you know what? It's okay. This is a very nice lake. See, I keep going to lake. It is a very nice pond. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying looking at this pond and just noticing the plants and the animals and just relaxing and just letting myself exist and look out at this place and kind of be like, damn, like I am a part of this whole thing happening around me. This is crazy. This is wild. You know, this body of water, these go these geese and ducks. And I how often do I see ducks? <laughs> you know, I don't see ducks that often. So it's cool I'm seeing one right now. This like moment of appreciation for like, I get the chance to do this. You know, I'm appreciative of the world around me. And when you go on social media, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like everything sucks or this techno hellscape where everyone is just clamoring for attention or, you know, trying to, you know, do stuff. Have They have agendas and objectives and uh, alternative means and you know, all this shit, man. Like people are like, I just want to get my engagement up or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's so tired and then I'm on this walk around this pond and I'm saying hi to people, you know, I'm like just nodding or looking from the eye saying, hey, how are you? You know, and you know, I'm a bit more extroverted than some people, but I'm, I'm an amnivert. Okay. So keep that in mind too. So like for me, like my extrovert side was brought out by being really calm and comfortable. Right. And I think that's why I'm an amnivert because when I get uncomfortable, I shut down. So, you know, this analogy, the, the lake, I keep, you know what? Fuck it. It's a lake. God damn it. I'm calling it a lake. The lake and the trash is kind of what, how I want you to think about social media and the world around you. You know, and I'm not, I'm going to get into this more in the video and in the, in the, later in the video, but 
I don't want you to treat all of social media like it's a waste or like it's 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 just a dumpster fire or it shouldn't even be fucked around with because there are aspects, pieces, parts of these social medias with the exception of Twitter where there's no redeemable, redeemable value whatsoever. There, like there's like I literally cannot think of a good reason to use Twitter. But <laughs> But keep in mind, like, there are ways you can make these things work for you. And we're going to get into that in this video. That's what part of this video is about, is how can we make social media work for us? So with all that being said, I think it's pretty safe to say, pretty safe assertion to make that uh, social media is just not good for your mental health. I really, well, I think being a... Uh woman growing up in the 2000s <laughs> I have a pretty unhealthy relationship with social media just overall um and I know it's not just a woman's thing but I think definitely affected everyone differently but growing up with it really made it I think an unhealthy thing obviously the first thing that popped up in my head is that it's unhealthy but I think it's a really awful mixed bag because there's so much good with connection on social media but there's also the fact that what you're connecting to is all um, edited, not the pictures themselves, but what actually you're seeing. So it's, it's a hard reference, I guess. When I started doing collage work, I'm a collage artist. And when I started collaging, I made a separate Instagram account to post and share my art. And it definitely started off as something that I thought for my creativity and my art was helpful because it helped me find other artists and other inspiration and find other points of view that matched up with mine um, in general, but also artistically. Uh, I'm really into surrealist stuff and I, you know, just in front of me didn't have a lot of access to other people who made stuff um, in the way that I do surreal wise. So um, it helped me both grow as an artist, but then it also helped me lose my way in other ways. Um, you know, trying to create so that more people can find your art or making me, or, you know, quote unquote, inspired me to try to make my art um, something that I make money off of, um, like as my full-time career. But I had to step back and realize that like the motivations that social media was giving me, especially related to creation and art, um, were super unhealthy and um, making creativity scary and intimidating and um, making it just something that was no longer fun. Um, I grew up on the internet, so it's a very intimate relationship, so to speak. I particularly uh, was part of like the Russian version of Facebook called Kontakte. It still exists, but um, that's where I grew up as a kid. So social media kind of like shaped my young child brain and um, continued to influence me later in life. And only recently have I been like, nah, I'm done with this. I used to do commission artwork, uh, mostly in like furry communities. Didn't really um, enjoy it that much, but it was pretty good. And I was doing social media during the time and I was talking to a lot of people. And the... Maybe it's part of like my personality just being fucking antisocial or something, but it was so draining. Aside from just the like pressure as an artist to, you know, you gotta put yourself out there and you gotta, you know, make fan art and you gotta make art for people so that they talk to other people about you or whatever, gotta make connections, gotta post here and there and on like 5,000 fucking platforms. It got so bad that my mental health was like exponentially <laughs> falling down the drain. And I'm kind of feeling like I'm still recovering from all of that because art is still so hard sometimes. 
because of the time where and when I spent on like commissions and social media and talking to people, it's like, what do I mean? If, if I'm not making art for money, am I even making art? That was a thing that I needed to like change my mentality about. Just not good for it. Repeated usage, constant engagement with with your social media feeds, comparing yourself comparing your life, seeing the ideal version of people's lives and then comparing it to your own life and then seeing these numbers and feeling like, and like being able to see that you're not at the top, you know, or whatever, all these things, it's not great for our health, especially like, you know, since we are social creatures and we don't really like being bossed around or ruled over or having people above us. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I can't really think of anyone who genuinely is like, man, I love when my boss at work tells me what to do. I love being given orders. I love being forced to do this thing that I don't really want to do because of socioeconomics or whatever. We like to be at the same level and footing as our fellow man. Social media doesn't do that. Social media, again, presents people's lives as being better than ours. And when, the, again, it's not even true. Everyone has a different life and different problems for the most part, you know. So yeah, social media is bad for our minds. It's bad for mental health. How does this necessarily fit with making art? Well, frankly, despite the romanticization of, of depression and anxiety and stuff like that, or bipolar disorder, anything like that in art in general, that's false. I vehemently reject that notion, and I don't subscribe to the idea that just because you have a mental illness of some kind, or you struggle with some sort of mental illness that you're automatically more creative and more attuned to your creative self than anyone else is okay i think that's ridiculous so with, th with that being said to work at your fullest capacity to be the artist you want to be to be the best artist you can be to be the most thoughtful and engaging artist you can be you need to have some semblance you need to take care of your mind you need to be well okay you need to be healthy you need to take care of yourself okay if you're not doing those things, not only will you suffer, but your work will suffer as well. If you step up to the canvas and you're miserable, okay, you feel like shit, making art, putting paint on that canvas is not going to make you feel better automatically. For some people, exceptions, not the rule, for some people, when they are just out, just oh, I'm going to put some shit down. It'll help them in some capacity, right? But I really don't think it's just making art that is therapeutic for people. I mean, I think, yes, art is therapeutic, of course. Of course, that's what kind of my entire art philosophy is kind of built on, is this idea that art can be therapeutic. But art is not going to cure you. Art is not going to be the answer. It is an important element of therapy of some kind you know i'm not saying with a psychiatrist necessarily but the kind of therapy of the work we do within ourselves you know like if if we're constantly miserable we're not going to lose that misery just because we painted something we really liked we're going to lose that misery and we're going to we're going to lose that misery by setting ourselves up for success by mitigating the factors that make our minds harm that harm our minds for example social media or, I mean, drug use, addiction of some kind, unhealthy habits, lack of exercise, lack of sunlight, general lack of movement, um, un unaddressed trauma, abusive behavior, um, dependency, a toxic relationship, all of these things that could be afflicting the mind at any given moment. All of these things work under the surface. They're not obvious, okay? It might seem obvious from the outside, but when you're living the, that kind of thing, when you're dealing with those kind of issues, it's very hard to really like nail what that feeling is and where it's coming from. It's very hard. So the point is, it's very, very deeply rooted. And art can help us navigate and think about those things and explore those things, but it's not gonna cure us or free us from these ailments. To do that, we need to do a, a lot of work and a lot of complex work and a lot of thinking and self-reflection. 
And to do those things, we need to be in the moment. We need to be active. We need to be mindful. We, we cannot distract ourselves willy-nilly. Distraction can be good, mind you. Watching a, a show you like or some videos or even, you know, looking at artwork on Instagram of a specific artist that you like and not based on the feed but based on your own curation. Those things can be good. We need rest. We need to veg out, as my friend Andrew says. But if we're vegging out, so to speak, all throughout our day and we're not giving ourselves any chance to just let our brain rest and collect itself, we're not gonna get any better. We're not gonna really get anywhere. And that's kind of how you get this cyclical kind of approach to art that some people are experiencing. Like, they're feeling uninspired. Like, oh, I just kind of feel like I make the same things. I don't really know what to do. I don't really have inspiration. Well, how much have you had to think about? How much time have you had to think about your artwork and your process and yourself and your life? And how many new experiences have you had recently? How many new places have you gone to? And even just in your own town or state or, you know, wherever. Like, have you driven to a new place? Have you taken the bus to a new place? Have you hopped on a train somewhere? Have you walked to a new place? Have you talked to someone you haven't talked to in a long time? Have you met a new person and just talked to them? All these things that give us new ideas and new perspectives on life. Are you engaging with those things or are you in the same cycles of being on social media when you wake up, being on it when you eat, being on it after you eat, procrastinating, not really kind of getting to your work until midway through the day, that kind of thing. And you know the reason why I know about this is because I have lived this. I know this process. I know what it's like. I know what it feels like. It feels shitty. It feels, it's like this comfort that you know is is harmful to you in some way because it's preventing you from doing the things you want to do, but it, it feels unsafe to break out of, you know? And that's scary. It's scary to have to deal with that. But again, that's why I'm saying when we take breaks from social media, when we let ourselves just be in the world we're in, it feels better. It generally feels better for our mental health and our creative process. Another thing I wanna note is how when we go on social media, again, when we're not really engaging with our moment to moment day and that kind of thing, and we're on social media, right? And we, we that's how we're engaging with those those dull moments. When we go to the canvas, right? You're at your moment, and let's say you just feel fine. You feel fine, you're at the canvas. You're looking at it and you're trying to figure out what you wanna draw, okay? And, or paint or what have you, or maybe even have a reference, okay? And the way, if, if what we, subconsciously tap into when we are in these moments of trying to create something are things we've seen or things we've experienced in in the recent past and if a lot of those things are just things we've seen on social media we're gonna acclimate our process to kind of fitting those parameters that are subconsciously set on ourselves by social media so let's say like you see like a bot like i've seen a lot of people making artwork that looks like basquiat's and not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that and again i don't really have any issues with people um replicating other artist styles or just making work that is directly inspired from or even derivative of, of another artist like i really don't care i don't really have an issue with those things because again my underlying stance is that i much rather have artists be derivative than harmful okay so that is kind of so you know when you're on social media you see all these Basquiat inspired artworks you're gonna kind of like you know tap into that again not that there's anything wrong with that but if we're trying if the goal is to go to to have new and novel and original ideas or at least ones that are for us new and novel and original um going on social uh, referencing social media in some way is not going to directly help right like again this is a subconscious process that will happen when you get to the canvas and not all every time not 100 percent of the time but a good amount of the time and then take the situation where you haven't even been on social media at all and you've had a whole day where you're just kind of like it's pretty slow and chill and you're just kind of thinking about stuff and just processing things and you know maybe you're waiting at the bus stop and you start thinking about like oh okay well i'm waiting for the bus right now and then you start thinking about the bus and then you're on the bus and you start thinking about a news story you've heard a long time ago where someone was hurt on a bus someone was assaulted and then you think about wow this is a really nice bus ride you know and then like i'm not being assaulted like i'm having a chill time i'm just riding the bus i'm just listen you know you, you might be listening to music on the 
bus or drawing on the bus or something and you're just chilling right and you come back to the canvas and you're thinking about the bus and you're thinking about the space the bus is a space and like how for some people it can be dangerous and scary and for others it can be peaceful and chill and just another way to get to work and just a part of your routine that kind of thing right this sort of associative thinking that happens with our minds when we give them the time to rest and breathe they'll do this extrapolating for us all you know almost for us almost you know independent of us when really we are our brains and all that good stuff so my point is fill your mind like think about what you're consuming like food what you eat you are what you eat right well you think what you see or you think what you engage with if you're not engaging with anything and you're staring you're kind of just looking in your world around you or striking up conversations or just kind of being in the moment and like really breaking things down and really thinking about the space around you or the people around you or the society around you or what have you your work is going to reflect that thinking your work is going to reflect that attitude you have towards the world if you're playful and you feel like to just mess with your environment you're playful right you, that will show up in your work you know you might see an opportunity to put, be like you know what fuck it i want to put googly eyes on a stop sign like i don't advise anyone does i'm pretty sure that's vandalism but you know what fuck it if that's what you find yourself doing and you're like fuck it that's what i want to do that playfulness and that energy will show up in your work and then if you're only looking at social media if you're looking at it a lot and you go to the canvas it's going to reflect how often you go on social media and that you're really just kind of regurgitating what an algorithm has fed you and it becomes removed from yourself because these aren't your thoughts this isn't who you are this is someone else so overall in this section about mindfulness and boredom and all that stuff think about doing bicep curls instead of letting your your arm rest and i'm saying this and when i mean that i don't mean just social media is like doing bicep curls because that's not a one-to-one -one analogy but i also mean just general activity right i mean you could be doing bicep curls incorrectly and hurting your bicep right I mean, is social media like that? It depends. Again, it depends how you use it. And think about this world, your worldview and what you're actively consuming and what you're actively thinking at a given moment. Being self-aware, being present. These things help you more to create art than rigorously practicing shading or composition or what have you. Because to do those things, to put in that work, to uh, that technical work that you need to do to, you know, be a better visual artist in the sense of render, how you render things and how, you know, you convey ideas to people and all that. To do that, you need those fundamentals. You need mental clarity. You need self-awareness. You need mindfulness. You need peace and quiet. You need those things. And if you're filling your brain up with noise and just information constantly, then you're not doing yourself any favors. And in fact, you're ex your brain is exhausted. If you feel like you don't know what you're doing on the canvas or you're not inspired, you might, your brain might just be really exhausted, okay? Now again, this is not a catch-all. This is not uh, a definite, this applies to everyone thing. Everyone is different, everyone has their own things. But if what I'm saying resonates with you, then just consider that your brain might need a break. Huh, my relationship with social media. Um, I mean, I would say I'd use it occasionally not that often because like i don't know i kind of get like sucked into it when i spend too much time there and i don't know like the moment i realize i get sucked in there i kind of like realize like what am i doing here i'm just you know just scrolling and scrolling and nothing kind of gets done if you get what i mean and so yeah i kind of try to avoid it by now because yeah, it doesn't really like help me to get like things done and i'm just like at the end of it after i watched like or like looked at all those pictures there's just like this after image in my head and i try to like like filter it and maybe try to do something on my own but i have like all those after images in my head and it just kind of like clutters my mind and so the picture i'm kind of like try to think of for envision it kind of just gets yeah it kind of gets lost and i can't really like make out all the details because like when i need like a reference i can just like look it up on pinterest or instagram or whatever and get like a huge load of like references that are kind of like what i try to envision so so i have like a starting point to 
to like get things started to know how things look like how to depict i don't know a certain flower or how anatomy works but at the same time i would say it kind of hinders me because like when i try to to create something i'm like stuck in my mind like mm, like is this something i would post is this something someone else would like and then this like inner critic comes and it's like yeah i don't think it's like good enough and oh that's cringy that's that's not cool it doesn't look good and i don't know then i become kind of self-conscious and yeah and i think i'm just standing in my own way when when this happens and so a lot of stuff is just you know somewhere borrowed at home and no one's gonna ever see this besides i don't know me and a close friend i think well i feel that her social media is is very much its own pocket universe um and and within that and, and within that universe there are um multiple i suppose consciousnesses consciousness i, I don't know uh but there's um uh, there are, are many um there are many uh self p- possessing um existences um within the the or the universe of social media so i suppose uh that so the her social the social media uni- universe is you know it's like our, like our, our universe where it is one whole thing but is a holistic um aggregation of multiple con- consciousnesses that are operating inside of this universe Throughout modern history, artists have worked and lived in communities alongside other artists, philosophers, laborers, and educators to generate ideas and exchange feedback. Ideas were generated from those artists' lived experiences outside of their studios. They are also generated from various moments of stillness or when engaging in mundane tasks where their brains were free to daydream. The idea of the tortured, solitary, artistic genius creating masterpiece after masterpiece in their tower of ivory and fire is mostly a myth. And in fact, said conditions are antithetical towards creating new and original artworks. There exists very few artists who have been able to do so. However, they are the exception not the rule. With that being said, are there conditions in today's society where a significant number of artists lack the fundamental needs for creating new, original, and inspired works? I think although great new ideas are usually articulated by individuals, they're nearly always generated by communities. And I think what I what I see as the waste is the waste that we make of, of that possibility of cooperative intelligence. Um, being an artist, you hear a lot of talk about genius, um, which is the process of singling out certain people in art history and saying those were the important ones, you know, Picasso, Rembrandt, Shostakovich, whatever. Whenever you look at any of those artists, you find that they, they lived and drew from a very, very active, flourishing cultural scene and they were only one of the elements in that scene. All these people who are called genius actually sat in the middle of something that I call senius, S-C-E-N-I-U-S. So just as genius is the um, creative intelligence of an individual, senius is the creative intelligence of a community. And what I want to see is more attention given to that possibility of, of creative behavior. So what that means, of course, is two things. One, one of them is the understanding that all people are born unequal, so everybody has a particular and unique set of gifts and talents, whatever they are. And 
Secondly, that intelligence is um, generated by communities, by cooperation of some kind. Um, so I suppose the, the thing about the, the biggest obstacle to that at the moment is that people have to earn a living. I often get asked to come and talk at art schools and I rarely get asked back because the first thing I always say is I'm here to persuade you not to have a job and <laughs> the professors always look a bit nervous at that point since they, they often consider that their task is to somehow smooth you into a job. Um, so my, my first message to people is try not to get a job. Um, that doesn't mean try not to do anything. It means try to leave yourself in a position where you do the things that you want to do with your time um, and where you take maximum advantage of your whatever your possibilities are. Um, and I suppose the, so the obstacle is that of course most people aren't in a position to do that. So I want to do anything to work to a future where everybody is in a position to do that. So go ahead, quit your job, okay? Yep, that's the answer. <laughs> but no, really, like doesn't what he says in the context of social media make sense? How everyone is sort of divided and segmented in these little pockets of the internet or in in reality of where they fit right and like we're all like oh just like I want to do my own thing I'm just kind of doing my thing you know like that mentality is another huge part of why a lot of artists are struggling and having a tough time even the artists that you see on social media who appear to be really successful and doing really well for themselves are struggling as well and there's some artists who yes have all the community and they have a really great relationship with social media and they they're very mindful and so on and so forth okay but those are very few artists and right now you're probably watching this video because you yourself are a struggling artist some aspect about your life your work something is not fulfilling you okay might I offer a community is what you need. In addition to improving your relationship with social media, having a community, and more specifically, a community centered around art, not exclusively about art, but centered around it, centered around creative thought and application of ideas. So, you know, people in your community don't necessarily have to be artists, but, you know, like I said in the, the little written piece, like educators or just philosophers or something like that. People you can talk to. People who also think about things and how things are strange and how they're novel and how they're peculiar and how they want to extrapolate on these ideas or talk about these things with other people who are like-minded. The way social media structures people alongside each other, not just from, you know, the compartmentalization of people, but also the idea of audience and followers, right? Like you have an, a one-way relationship with your audience. This look at what I make and now you must consume it versus a community where everyone is at equal footing. Everyone has a place at the table. Everyone is equal, right? This is what is in reality, right? Every artist you see on social media, you're at the same table as them. You're both artists. You're both at the artist table. Some people, and naturally so, might see themselves, ah, I'm just at the, the kids' table, and they're the big artists. They're doing the big artist stuff, you know? But in reality, we're all doing the same thing, fundamentally speaking. And I want to shout out Burger Krieg, the YouTuber Burger Krieg, for that table analogy. I'm going to link his video down below. I'm going to link some homework down below for you guys to consider in your journey of improving your mindset about art, okay? I'll put some videos down below for you guys to reference. Back to what I was saying about being on equal footing. Community makes us apparent. It's when you're in a community of other people and you know, you're not you don't you're not delusional with your ego or anything like that. You'll feel like, "Oh, I'm just everyone else is pretty much like me in the sense of what we value and what we care about and how we want to be spoken to." Like we share these interests and we share th these goals. That's what community is about. You know, it's like having a shared vision and then working together. You know, and also just chilling too. 
like having friends and just enjoying each other's company and being able to just talk about whatever freely and openly to each other. You know, that's community. For me, what I've noticed, at least in myself, is ever since I've left college, what I've, one of the things I've been fundamentally lacking is that really strong sense of community. I've been trying to find it here and where I am, but it's tough, man. It's tough. I have not found a cohesive space that I can go to and encounter artists working. You know, I've met people, individuals, or people who host spaces that people come in sometimes, but I haven't found something that works for me uh, in what worked in college for me. So that's been one of my major problems. And so that's part of the reason why I'm making this video, that and a million other reasons why, is because this is something I believe many artists are struggling with today. Before I close this section off, I just want to share this. 99% of art is valid. The 1% usually comes from artwork that is created with um, some kind of bigotry or malice or predatory or harmful intention behind it. Something like that. A very tiny percentage. With the exception of those kinds of artworks, all art is valid. And every artist is going through their own journey. And we should be glad that they're creating and using their energy to make beauty rather than hurting people. And then when you realize social media exploits your insecurities, and that your insecurities affect how you view other artists, you can then make social media work for you, not the other way around. I think about art a lot, and I think about artists a lot, and um, communities of artists, and the, the evolution of artists. <laughs> um, you know, the artist subspecies of humans. Um, it's really interesting to me that people don't realize how social and community-driven art is. They just, for some reason, think that you just are born an artist, I guess, and you just make art for your whole life. You don't have any friends. You, you don't have a job. You're starving. <laughs> But you're just making art because you really like making art. Um, but art has always been a group thing. It might not be a it might not be a group activity, but it is for the collective, so to speak. Speak like fucking cave paintings. It was children painting things up there on those walls, um, as well as adults. Uh, but particularly, there's like a cave where it was evident that an adult was holding up a child to like paint on the walls paint their pretty pictures tell their story um which is another reason why i think art is literally stories but like in different forms is because it began as like storytelling gathering around the fire and like telling the mythologies of the sky that's art it's verbal art i guess but it's still art mm, how do you define art community exactly i would say a group of people larger than a, about three or four um where your primary interest that brings you guys together is art and the creation of art and all those people are in some fashion an artist and also mm. yeah like are you a part of one if so what does that look like are you close are you far are you online are you in person are you supportive are you criti critical what kind of like that kind of thing i uh, know i get it um well i would say that the group is kind of split because like I have like a few friends at uh, at university that I don't know we kind of like come together from time to time we kind of doodle a few times and then I have like a few friends online and then you know we just share our stuff on our Discord server and most of the time they are not that critical I would say it's more like oh I don't know I I like to green shade that you use or like oh no i don't like the autonomy in this picture i don't know 
the leg looks wonky or something like this. But the real life people, I would say, they're a bit more critical. Soak themselves in their in their own in their own universe and cre in, in, in create out of that. I think I think it takes someone very special to be able to do that. Um, uh, like uh, for example, um, I don't I don't know if I told you about this already, but I probably have. But I I read an interview with Aphex Twin, and from uh, I think 2001 or 2002, and he was asked about people um, that uh, have. that I've wanted to collaborate with him in the past. And um, one of the, the artists that he mentions is uh, is Bjork, and he talks about how her method of creating is like, she's like a kid at a candy store where she, she, you know, she goes in and she's like, and she, she, she likes that, she likes that, she likes that, she likes that. And then she amalgamates all those things and Bjorkifies them. And then he said, conversely, with myself, that I just lock, lock myself in a room and just make music with whatever come, come, comes to my head. And uh, I'm not, not saying one way is, is, is better or worse, but I I think that's, I think Apex, the way the Apex Twin makes music in that is just incredible because I feel that's that's just that's much harder to do than than taking influences. Social media can be good and bad, but in the long run, as long as you take care of yourself and you know, are very aware of how you're using it. It can be a very good thing. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips, some some uh, applications uh, that you can you can use in your daily life to improve your relationship with social media. So the first thing you want to, you're going to want to do is uh, be intentional with your social media usage. Okay, what do I mean by being intentional? I mean try and avoid the uh, almost automatic need or uh, action of just pulling up your phone whenever you feel a little bored. Try and resist that as much as possible, and set a very specific set a time for yourself to then look at social media uh, because when you set that intention you have a plan of how you're gonna go about it you're like okay I'm gonna check my messages I'm gonna make my posts I'll check my, my like the things I need to look at um, and not look at my feed which I, is another tip don't look at your feed but I'll get into that later more specifics on that later but you know set a time like you know okay 9 p.m. I'm finished with work uh, I will check my social media for about 15 to 20 minutes look at what I need to look at message who I need to message and post what I need to post and move on tip number two when you use uh, platforms like YouTube right where you have content you're gonna actively consume be intentional with the content you consume okay identify topics that genuinely interest and engage your mind rather than uh, content that you consume just to purely kill time, okay? Um, so my friend Andrew, shout out to Andrew, he was a big help in this video. He says, it's never bad to learn something new. So artists, go learn some STEM stuff. Channels like SciShow, Casual Geographic, Tier Zoo. Find edutainment YouTubers who teach you subjects you don't really care about, but present it in an engaging way because it'll broaden your horizons as a person and will also make your art better since it's another source to pull inspiration from. Also, the world is fucking wacky. You said it, Andrew. It's very true. Yeah, so, you know, if you're interested, like me, of course, like all of us in art, check out some channels like uh, Solar Sands or Blind Dweller. Those are two really great channels that I recommend for art, art, artworks and videos about art. My third tip is don't engage with your feed. I mentioned this one a little earlier, but do not engage with your feed. Uh, your feed is designed 
to keep you on the app as long as possible. And like I mentioned before, when we feed our brains these little bits of information from our feeds or from the stories, we are forcing certain our brain to be focused on one singular thing at a time and give it no room to breathe or relax. We're just purely focused on, oh, what is this person posting? Oh, what's this artwork? Oh, oh, what's, oh, this pisses me off. You know, stuff like that. It's just kind of like force feeding uh, unexpected information, right? Unexpected things. You're not really prepared for what you'll, what you'll see. So, you know, you're going into it and just kind of you don't know what you're gonna what you're gonna see or how it's gonna affect your day if at all being aware of that going on your feed is designed to keep you there as long as possible same with the explore page same with the stories um and that you don't really get you're not really i promise you're probably not gonna get too much out of it and like i said before about the importance of stillness and letting your brain be open and wandering this directly inhibits that and makes it difficult to stay in this kind of mindful mindset <laughs> if that makes sense um and generally i personally i really do not recommend using tiktok like at all i know there's a thing uh andrew and i were talking about it about attention span how attention spans aren't necessarily affected by social media usage what so on and so forth i'm not i'm not sure about the whole attention span thing i don't know if tiktok really affects your t attention span or not but what i do know is that it is worse than instagram in terms of keeping on the app for as long as possible and it's worse uh, than Instagram because you don't like you literally could be fed a misinformation a lot more easily than you will on Instagram. Don't use TikTok at all. Like if you use TikTok and you make content on it, treat it the same way you would treat Instagram. How I mentioned, like just kind of have a set time for making a TikTok or posting TikToks and then post them and then check it later. And like if that's how you get your bread, get your bread. I have a, I have a really good friend who uses TikTok and uh, makes money off it and makes TikToks. And they're pretty funny. Like, I watch his TikToks and he's the only TikTok account I look at from time to time. There's nothing inherently wrong with making TikToks um, or video content or reels on Instagram or anything like that. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. Uh, but just be careful because the apps, like I mentioned before, they're designed to keep you there as long as possible and give you this false notion that if you post more, you'll eventually get to a high follower count or a high engagement or whatever. So just be aware that that is in play. The fourth tip is to practice discipline. Okay, so discipline is a pretty difficult thing to attain. It's hard to be disciplined. You need discipline to be a, you know, a successful anything. To be successful in any, any field, you need discipline. Discipline can be practiced in a lot of ways, but one really good way is just holding yourself accountable and sticking to a routine or schedule um, and doing what works for you. So discipline does not necessarily mean to, you know, be make your, force yourself to be uncomfortable and force yourself to go into a new way of being, right? Or like, oh, I, okay, I'm, I'm not a morning person, but I need to be disciplined, so I need to wake up at 6 a.m. every day and work out and drink a protein smoothie and take a shower and meditate you, no that's not that will never work you need to have a motivator and you need to have a system that works for you so if you naturally wake up at nine and you go to bed at 12 you know let's just say that's you don't force yourself to wake up at six and go to bed at, at 10 if you're not ready to do that you know you could slowly work your way to doing that and that's the huge thing is if you want to get to a place with this using discipline you have to practice and do it in increments so if you like if you want to be disciplined in with like social media, just every time you have the feeling or the desire to pull open Instagram or YouTube when you're not really doing anything, um, just stop yourself and ask yourself, you know, like, could I be using this time to rest my brain? Could I be using this time to, you know, take a, a very brief nap if I'm tired? Could I use this time to take a shower? Could I use this time to drink some water? Could I use this time to take go on a walk? Could I use this time to do anything, anything else for myself that's not just, you know, dicking on Instagram or YouTube for like an hour. And again, I'm not saying that you should never uh, do these things, like never, ever, ever, ever go on YouTube or never, ever, ever go on your Instagram feed. But I'm warning you against the effects that these companies have on us with their algorithms and how they're, they're specifically designed to keep us engaged as long as possible. So just be aware of, of how what they want what these companies want like imagine every time you pull up your your computer your phone or whatever to use one of these apps just in this like and i don't want to say this in a derogatory way but like mindless scrolling just think of mark zuckerberg smiling and being very self-accomplished and feeling really good about himself that you are addicted to his platform or 
um, whatever faceless entity of YouTube you don't like being or Google being really happy that you are on like are just constantly engaging like think about them and how they're laughing right that might be a good way to motivate yourself it might make things worse I don't know that's that, that works for me sometimes so yeah just be disciplined and you know it's just saying just be disciplined is like saying to someone you're depressed just be happy I get it I understand it's hard and that's why I advise doing things in a way that works for you. So if you wake up at 10 or 9 every morning and you go to bed at 12 or 1, right? And you're like, well, this is just how I am. Like, you know, like I would like to wake up earlier, but I just have a really tough time. There's lots of things you can do um, to address that. And the best thing to do is take it slow, take it one day at a time, create a goal, create a plan. Okay, if you want to scroll less on Instagram, if you want to use those apps less, create a plan. I'm only going to check Instagram uh, after I've brushed my teeth, after I've eaten breakfast for 5-10 minutes, and then again at the end of the day for 5-10 minutes. Um, and that's all I need, right? And then when you set this cell, when you set up this plan and you make an agreement with yourself, uh, don't betray yourself. Don't uh, go against your own word. Like pretend like you're making a promise to a friend. If it helps to treat it like that, treat it like that. But also give yourself time. You know, if you re I, I like watching stupid YouTube videos. Like if you've worked a whole day and you've done a lot of stuff, you know a lot of good stuff and you're like, you know what, today I'm I just like right now, I wanna lay in my bed and watch YouTube videos for for an hour. And I play and I wanna do that because I've done a lot of stuff today and I, I deserve this. Yeah, I say go right ahead. And like use that as a reward. You know, like using these things that are really fun for our brains, you know? Like use them as rewards because they feel so much better than when just like constantly overloading your brain like like imagine like you know if you ate sweets every meal with every single meal you ate sweets and then when you had dessert come it's not as special but if you were to you know only eat sweets at dessert then you look forward to uh, dessert so i hope that helps just like you know give yourself that downtime you need and give yourself that veg time oh and uh, also treat like watching youtube videos and Instagram feeds in similar ways. The reason why I feel like YouTube's a little better than Instagram in this way is because you have um, more agency in which content you consume. Uh, not necessarily the content you recommended, but you have more agency in like what information you're consuming versus Instagram, which can just put that information right in front of you. For my last tip I wanna give you, this is kind of a big one. So I'm gonna put it in a new category new section of this video before we make social media work for us we need to be in a, a circumstance or a condition where we're not reliant on social media for anything at all we have no dependency on it no connect no like real significant connection to it nothing where we can live without it Okay, how do you do this? Kenneth, how do I, okay, sure, I hear you, but how do I go about this? I think it is really important to go outside to touch some grass, okay? I've talked about touching grass before, uh, but I'm gonna give more concrete tips on how to do this, okay? So if you are someone who doesn't never, who just never goes outside or Heart, goes outside for only things you need. I I get it. I'm similar. You know, I'm a homebody. Okay. I kind of this the way I grew up. I've become very attached to the home space, and I get uncomfortable when I'm outside of it, and so on. So I I, I can empathize. Okay. I'm speaking from experience. But if you want to make social media work for you, you need to do live out in the real world. You need to spend a significant amount of time uh, in the in the world accumulating experiences which those experiences as I've mentioned before will inform your art and be good for your art for every hour you spend in the studio you should have another hour spent in the real world in my opinion I think this would create the most potent artwork you know the most informed work okay so what are some things you can do well think you can think of it also this way that you're the master of your own life right you make the decisions of what you do like everything you do is up to you okay and that you can take control and that you can do the things you want to do with your life so i'm gonna just give you some examples okay of things you can do set up events and times and schedule things to go and do if you live in a city or a you know a an urban area with lots of people and things happening i guarantee you you there are free events that you can go to 
and check out. There's plenty of free events. You can go on Google, type in free events in so-and-so, whatever town or whatever place, okay? Um, I can guarantee you, I can promise you that there's free things to do. If you're worried about transportation, there's public tra there's almost certainly public transportation where you are and riding the bus, like I alluded to earlier, could be a great time to clear your head and just kind of be in this wandering, mindset of just being open and receptive to everything you can go on uh you can go to art museums uh if you have a little extra money some art museums are free some cost money you can if you don't have money you can order a free one if you there's plenty of small free galleries if you want to go to a big art museum and you have some sp spending money great idea too you can spend a whole day there you can spend a lot of time there um you could also just go to a park spend some time outside just kind of observe the world around you overhear people's conversations look at plants and trees just enjoy the sun if it's sunny sit in the rain if it's raining you know um journal be open to spontaneous interactions with people um but don't force yourself to talk to people if you don't want to like you know if you're an introvert and you like being an introvert and you just prefer to keep to your keep to yourself and the people you trust that's totally fine i don't i don't put that i don't judge you for that i don't think anyone should and if anyone does fuck them um but be present you know be present set yourself up for success depression festers when we have nothing to look forward to okay it is a lot easier to be depressed when we have nothing happening in our future we don't have a plan if you are able to set up trips for yourself you know or little day outings or whatever schedule those plan those make make an intent set an intention to go do those things because it'll give you something to look forward to and when you go do those things you're not fretting about what am i doing in the studio it's a lot easier to resist the need to scroll on social media when you're not just doing the same mundane things again and again and again you know and like we, you're in this habit of checking social media when, when i'm doing mundane things and so on and so forth do those things be an earthling live in the world around you go to events if someone invites you to a thing take a chance and go to it if you have no one to hang out with hang out with yourself take yourself on a little date go to a coffee shop get a coffee and just sit with yourself and stare out a window and journal or write things down and the other half of that would be to take care of yourself like I said, one major thing, give your brain rest. Another thing, get enough sleep. Another thing, drink enough water. Another thing, take sh regular showers. Another thing, exercise. Everything you hear people say, like self-care, haha, <laughs> lol, self-care tips. Like, you know, those, they're, they're legit. You know, like you gotta, you gotta do them. You know, taking deep breaths, me um, exercising, meditating, doing all those things is, really helps. Like if you're in a rut and you're like frustrated and depressed or whatever, and you're just sitting there like, ah, ah, nothing good. I'm just, ah, I'm a, a bundle of stress, you know, like, like go take care of yourself, do whatever you got to do, you know, take a shower, meditate, drink water, uh, whatever, you know, just take care of those things. Because if you're going to work on a art piece and you're miserable or you're dehydrated, you're, you're not clean. If you don't feel clean and comfortable, if you have like if your kitchen's really dirty or something like that, like there's, there's things looming over you, address them, take care of those things first. You know, the canvas will be there when you get back, when you're finished, you know, take care of these things and you have less on your mind. And I promise you, your work will improve and, you're, and you will enter a flow state a lot easier than you would if you were really stressed about stuff. You know, I get working full time, I do it right now. I get being a full-time student. I was a student for, I wanna say 18 years, probably 18 years I, I've, I was a student, I get it. School unfairly takes your out, outside time away, like by giving you homework, which I think is whack. You know, being an artist, you're crafty, you're creative. You can find 30 minutes to sneak in a drawing or a small painting or something. Like, you know, there's, it's not impossible. Whatever you can do to take care of yourself and take care of the things stressing you. And uh, if you're just generally stressed or upset about something, and there's nothing you can think of to address it. If you're like, Kenneth, that sounds cute and all, but like, I'm just miserable. Uh, if there's anyone you could call, if you can call a family member that you trust or a friend you really trust, just call them and say, hey, what's up? How you doing? Take your misery and turn it into kindness take that negative energy and turn to positive energy hey man how you doing i really miss you you know i've been thinking about you what's going on in your life how's so and so how are your parents how is your sister or whatever just invest that energy into just like giving someone uh time and attention someone you care about someone that you you trust that time and attention and hopefully that will help you so yeah these are my tips for how you can uh make social media work for you is that you kind of set it to the wayside and you live your life and you set a time where you do social media you, you know you do all if you do want to do all the engagement games like making the reels and the stories and the deals and the and the and the responses or whatever set the times to do that don't just periodically check these things to constantly be engaged because it'll drive you not to know exhaust your brain you can do it man i really believe in you i really think you can do it 
I, I know I'm throwing a lot on your plate right now. I am throwing a big old nutritious steak and vegetables and mashed potatoes on your plate right now. And I'm expecting you to eat it all. <laughs> I'm not I'm not expecting you to eat it all at once. This is a metaphorical plate, and this metaphorical plate of food will not go bad. And it is you can take it chunk by chunk. Okay, bite by bite. I just want you to keep in mind that um, there are options, there are ways to improve your situation, uh, and there's hope. There's hope for yourself, for your artwork, for your life. So I highly recommend going about trying to do some of these things for yourself, practice some discipline, making things work for you. Just do what you can. Do what you can. Don't don't be kind to yourself. Don't force yourself to do anything. Don't set unrealistic expectations for yourself. If you, you know, wake up at 10 a.m. and that's what, what you're comfortable with, but you really want to wake up at 6, just wake up at 9.45 the next day. Just force yourself to get up at 9.45 you can. Just like, I'm getting up at 9.45. Set that intention and get up at 9.45. It's only 15 minutes and you could probably do it. And the next day or the day after that, 9.30 and then 9.15 and then 9. You know, like bits. If you're like, I really want to make a painting in a week, but I'm, I'm a sl I work very slow. It takes me a month to do a painting for whatever reason. Try and just do it. Like when you're about to, you know, stop painting, give your, just say, all right, another 15 minutes. That's it. Just another 15 minutes. I think uh, 15 minutes is a good chunk of time to like increase and decrease intervals by so that you can, um, you know, be more effective with your time and think about your time. Those are my tips. And before we end this video, I want to talk a bit about the future. <music> It's scary, man. The future's scary. It's a scary thing. Or it could just be not a scary thing. Depends. Depends on who you are. But uh, this is just a pretty off the cuff talking about the future now. But you know, uh, what do I what do I see in the future? So for art in general, what I want to do in the future for this channel and my Discord server, I I'm hammering on this idea of community and audience, right? And right now I am in sort of an in-between. You know, I have people who, who just watch, you know, and just hang out and watch my content and like doing it, uh, putting up my voice on the background or whatever. And I have no issues, I have no qualms with that whatsoever, none whatsoever. Um, if you just like listening to me talk and you don't really need to have that interaction, you know, if that works for you, that's fine. Um, but what I want to do is I want to grow a community and that's what I'm working on doing right now in my Discord. Kenneth, what does this community of yours look like? Like, what do you want this to be? Um, I want it to be sort of like an all-encompassing art space uh, in terms of education and growth and connection. Like, I want a lot of the fundamental tenets and necessities of art to be made available to those and I want to use it as a as a means of communicating my message of mindful social media usage being an earthling going outside experiencing the real world building communities of your for yourself um, and for the sake of other people being a experiencer of the world curating pieces of the world to observe and collect in your mind um, and in your journals and to help people and to let yourself be helped like i want these things to be made available for for everyone anyone who needs it so like i envision like a big old discord server that has general art channels you know where people can just jump in and throw their work out there no no uh conditions right but then i also want like specified groups so like different roles that people can be in like if you're a sculptor you can you have the sculptor role if you're a painter you have the painter role you have multiple roles of course and you have access to channels and spaces that allows access to chat chat rooms where people can teach about oh hey um this is how i sculpted this so like i use these materials and these techniques and um if you want to learn hit me up i'll teach you and like posting videos or making videos that of, of people showing off certain skills and techniques. Instead of having to pay thousands of dollars for art school, you could join uh, this hypothetical community of people and get all the benefits of art school, but for free. Really, all art school had was a was a, a place, you know, like they had a, had a place and people with experience, right, in one place. But we could, with technology, like we don't have to be succumb to social media or the limitations that social media puts on us. We can create our own spaces and be powerful in that sense. Like we can, we could be the masters of our own destiny. So this Discord server that I want to build up into, and eventually I want to build my own app, which I'll get into that in a second. But I want this Discord server to be a place where like anyone who's interested in art and feels lonely and feels like they don't know what they're doing to come and find community. Like I want that for people. 
I want that to be accessible. I want that to be free. I don't want money to stand in the way of anyone being an artist. I want people to work together and support each other and protect each other. That's what I want to cultivate. And I personally feel like I have the leadership capabilities to foster such a such a space. Now, this isn't me talking from ego. I'm really trying not to because, you know, saying a positive thing about yourself could be perceived that way nowadays, especially with social media. And again, trying to undo all those things. But based on my experience, you know, I feel like I'm a good leader. I take into consideration several factors when it comes to decision making. And I, I make time for people who need it so far in my community. People ask for help, I offer help, and I'm there on the front lines, in the cut, doing things. I don't want to be in an ivory tower. I don't want to be distant from people. I want to be right next to everyone. I want to be at the same table. I want to be present. I want to be a part of it just like everyone else. I think that's what would make me a good leader. And I believe in myself. And I believe in this mission to create this free, open art space where people can meet new people and make friends and work together. And eventually, we uh, people who have the means have studio spaces in different places and people on the Discord like oh hey you're in my town i'll come can i come to your space and check it out and, you know meet people in real life and build and foster these connections and hopefully build and foster new art movements too and new schools of thought and new techniques and skills that can become widely available you know and like try and remove this division that social media wants to keep with all these high follower counts and you know like being oh i've been on this platform for this many years i have this much score my score is this number right i want to get rid of that i want to delete that i want to remove that from the from consideration i want everyone to be equal on equal footing and have the means of being on the same team in the same place so what is the app i mentioned like what's this idea for the app um i have an idea for an app where it's it's an idea okay and it's very much subject to change it could very well not happen at all but i really do hope to make it happen and I think through the continued growth of this YouTube channel and the Discord server and accumulating the resources necessary and having um, the people to get feedback from and bounce ideas off of and people with different experience coming to offer their help, hopefully, ideally, um, I think it could happen. So what's the idea? Basically, it would be like a mix of Patreon, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube, right? Just as general concepts, not like, oh, it's going to be all those put in one. But like all like they all have certain features that I feel like would be useful to an artist but again they have elements to them that are detrimental envision the like an artist page right everyone has a page okay and the page is divided into different groups you could see finalized works like finished works signed works right you could see works in progress you could see sketches um, you could see like songs, you can listen to songs, you can see film, short films, you could see videos or whatever they've made. Like they, people, like you have full customizability of your page. Kind of like MySpace. You know, like if you want to edit the code, you edit the code and you make your space how it looks. Okay, but if you just want to use the default uh, parameters, use the default parameters. And I want, I would envision it to be very flexible. There's that aspect to it. And then you could post all your songs, you could post all your works and you could post where you've shown, what galleries and spaces you've shown at. And if you are a gallery or a uh, museum, you could create a, a special kind of page for that space. And you can have open listings for like, hey, we want this artist to come to this space. You must be resident of this city, whatever. And then instead of people having to fill out the same applications again and again and try and just do the really tedious grant work, they could just apply with their profile and you can see everything that they intend to show or want to show about themselves and that would encourage people to be as um, open and expressive on the platform as possible and to put in work to make their profile good or and not even good just like effective because your profile is not just to show and get points it's like you're using this to actively apply to get grants or gallery showings and stuff like that in addition with the Patreon aspect, each page would have a $1, $2, $3, $4, $5, whatever a month thing each person can pay, right? Like, let's say you're using the app and let's just say hypothetically, I have a, a profile in here and you're like, you know what? I really like Kent's artwork. I want to support him. I'll give a dollar a month. You just give me a dollar a month. And uh, I would maybe like, you know, I have works in progress, but I only show them to people who pay me a dollar a month and they can see my works in progress. Now, obviously there's a lot of, what ifs, Kenneth, what about this, this, like there's all those, right? Yeah, of course. And 
those would definitely be things I would consider and be um, thinking about closer to the planning phase and the building phase. Uh, but right now, I just want to share with you my vision, my idea. Okay. Um, and this would be a way for people to, you know, be a patron directly, you know, like where the same place where all your work is, the same place where you you have uh, your artist statement, the same place where you have all your finalized works, all the, the place where you have all your songs, the place where you have like pictures and videos of all your shows, like to like the whole, like as close to a full picture of your artist self person as possible. I want to make through this app. For the app itself, there wouldn't be an algorithmic feed like Instagram or TikTok or even YouTube recommendations or shorts. It would be like, you know, hey, these are the, you can customize it. You know, like, what do you want to see when you open up that? Do you want to see like the featured artists of the month? Do you want to see events happening? Do you want to see um, artworks of the week or the day or whatever? Do you want to see... Like, what do you want to see? Like, I want to give the users that flexibility to be like, this is what I want to see when I open up this app. I want to see, like, I want, I'm looking for opportunities right now for gallery spaces in New York. So I'm going to make sure that when I open my, my uh, initial feed or my dashboard or whatever on this hypothetical Kenny Art app, I would see open gallery calls and listings, and then I could apply on my phone right there relatively quick or on my computer relatively quick and invite people to come look at my profile um, or like have have those um, gallery owners or whatever look at my profile and if it's like hey maybe your work doesn't fit our need but hey like you should check out this guy or this gallery's work like they they have a lot they've put on a lot more artists that are attuned to your style um, and you can also you know art collectors can be on there and be like i'm looking for the new hot and coming up and coming stuff uh, what's out there and they'll go on and be like hey I really like your work I would like to purchase some of your pieces so like I really want to bring in all elements and aspects of the art world into one space that is not predatory and that is not um, driven by profit money's a, a, a necessary evil right now so you know in my mind right now with this whole planning phase it would be like the money any money we would make would to be keeping the platform afloat and keeping it um, running and that would be pretty much it like I wouldn't want to be making a million dollars off of this like I don't need that I don't need a million dollars you know I can live without that I've been living without a million dollars so I can do without it if people want to pay me a dollar a month if 10,000 people want to pay me a dollar a month so I can make 10,000 a month 10,000 or under 20,000 a year that'd be awesome that'd be super cool and I could live with just that that I'd be satisfied with or even uh, 60,000 a year like anything where I can pay for rent pay for food and pay for necessities and have a little extra to enjoy myself that's all I need so I want you guys to know that I'm not on YouTube or to 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 purely just make a ton of money I'm not I'm not trying to do that and if I did happen to make a lot of money I would probably put it back into like building and improving my community and my this hypothetical app or putting it towards building this app yeah, that's what I see for the future. I hope that this has inspired you or excited you in some way. If you're interested, if you're like, hey, I have the means and you want to build this app, hit me up, please. This is proof that I thought of it. And this is my idea. Okay, so hit me up and I'll be, I'll be super down to work with you in whatever capacity. Yeah, dude, that's kind of it. The end of this video, it's sort of like this taking me so long to make this video, but because of like all these ideas, like, dude, this is hard for me to organize and really like get a solid thing going, you know, but this is the best way I've been able to express it with voiceover and cutting it up and try and make it sound eloquent and flow as smoothly as possible. But you know me, I'm, I'm a rambly man. So I say, um, and like a lot. So thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for hearing me out. Thanks for being hopeful with me and making art and being yourself, taking care of yourself, doing all those things like you know, I, uh, if you want to make the world a better place, it starts with making yourself better, you know, bettering yourself um, because you're an active part of the world. So if you want to see a good world, you should be the best version of yourself that you can be. Um, no corny shit. I mean that. Thanks for watching this video, but I really want to say thank you to Kyle and Andrew for helping me in this video with research things and wording things and ideas and just giving me feedback really, really Thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy schedules to do that. And I want to thank Lexi, Lisa, and Jan for, and Kyle, doing interviews that you've seen throughout this video that I've been cutting in that kind of helps supplement what I'm talking about. I, I really thank you guys for taking the time to, you know, be a bit vulnerable and answer my questions and be a part of my video because this is another thing too, is like I want 
my community to be active part of my videos <laughs> of my videos um i want you guys to be in my videos i want you guys to be a part of it like i said this is like this is how i push back against the idea of just being a content creator and an influencer or whatever like i hope i'm never really considered an influencer because i think that has a negative connotation but anyway that's besides the point i want active participation from people and i want you guys to be a part of things um and in the future i would love to travel to various cities and places where people are working and have studios and have practices and film you guys and you know ask you guys questions and look at your artwork and extrapolate on it and all that kind of stuff so documentary style yeah anyway um that's enough about that enough about the future thanks again for watching being a part of what i'm doing here and i hope that if you're seeing this for the first time this is the first video you ever watched for me wow thanks for coming all the way down to whatever mark of the video we're at now but yeah thank you so much for taking the time and i hope that i've somehow i hope i've convinced you in some part to you know join join me in what i'm doing here and uh help me attain my goal for the future because uh, i really believe in myself and i really believe we can make this happen and you know it's going to be a bumpy road with twists and turns and unexpected potholes but as long as you know we got each other and that we believe in ourselves we can make anything happen so i'll leave you with that peace out and also I just want to share this with people. Um, oh, wait, I can't actually talk about this so that it makes sense. Um, what you're doing with art and I don't know, the, the image that I see in my mind for what you want out of art and what you see as art and I think what most people probably would if they really thought about it. Um, imagine that. Um, but like having a tool and it's specifically for websites, which can be art, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, NeoCities, um, it's a free hosting website uh, for your websites. You can make like an art blog. You can make literally a dump of like your hyperfixation. Like some people will li literally spend hours on a website dedicated to like one character in some obscure anime. That happens. Um, some are like literally informational, which is great. But like with the human touch, you know, it's not a fucking textbook out there, but it's like a person sharing your information. Or, not your information. <laughs> a person sharing information with you. Um, people can even make games in there. And it's got that, you know, cool as fuck aesthetic from fucking early 2000s. You don't have to have it look as crappy as it looked back then. You can make it extremely fancy. If you want but yeah it's just i feel like there's so much freedom in that that i want out of art too um that some people might find it interesting Hey, thanks for uh, watching that that whole video. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. I hope that the message I put out resonates with you, and I hope it at least gets you thinking about uh, your own social media habits and you know your own journal habits. And it's not to shame you or make you feel bad. It's just to give you a uh, an additional perspective on things. That's it. Uh, my opinion is just one more perspective that you can hear out and put in your um, uh, your tool belt, tool belt of uh, perspectives on issues. So that way you can 
be better informed. That was my purpose of making this video in the first place, was to just share how I felt about social media, how I still feel about social media, because it has been several months since I started making the video. Um, Kenneth, why did it take you so long to make this video? I could have made this in a month. I could have made this in two weeks. Well, good for you. I'm really happy about that, that you are very good at making videos. Um, uh, but for me, I had a, a lot of things going on. And uh, I talked about that a little bit. And whether you want to call it excuse or you want to be understanding of it, you know, more whatever you want to do, more power to you. But really, there's been a lot of things on my end going on. Um, uh, I talked about a few of them in my Discord. I talked about a bit more detail. Um, but basically, uh, I, man, where do I even start, you know? Um, well, before I even go on, um, what's the point of the real talk stuff, right? What's the, you know, what, 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 what you know, why are we doing a real talk? Uh, you know, what's, it, uh, the point is to tear down as much, as many of the barriers between the viewer and myself as possible because I feel like uh, a lot of people on YouTube try and portray themselves and you know and this is not a dig at them but try and portray themselves in a in a in a in a flawless way or not not nah, like clean I would say clean cut you know not perfect but clean cut you know um but I'm not really into that kind of stuff I, I like realness I like raw raw stuff I like lo-fi bedroom pop music <laughs> No, but for real. Um, so I'm going to be talking about some mental health stuff. And I've talked about that a few times on this channel. But I'm just going to put all the trigger warnings, just a blanket, if anything, would any particularly th heavy thing or something would trigger you in some way, I would just dip now, you know, if you're not in that kind of headspace, if you're not ready for that kind of thing, I would just suggest logging off here. Thank you for watching. You're a real one. God bless you. Take it easy. Drink some water. Do whatever you got to do. Okay, so uh, that's been issued. That's your warning. Um, the importance of talking about mental health, you know, uh, and being honest about it is more important than uh, we think. Um, at least I think sometimes. Um, I, people talk about, you know, destigmatizing mental health and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and I, and that and part of that to me is is being just honest, and is, and is just sharing your experience because um, <clears throat> makes other people feel less alone. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, my recent diagnosis. Okay, and again, I'm not t telling you this to get sympathy points or to. Um, you know, whatever, whatever, however people like to uh, create a, a negative narrative around sharing mental health stuff, whether it be um, for attention or for um, to, to get uh, things, uh, support, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting support, by the way. Um, but my purpose is, is just to, I hope that one person watches this and they feel less alone or they feel uh like it's not hopeless that's my that's that's all i want and i think it'd feel a little good for me to share it and to put it on my youtube channel because uh because you know one of the things i build on my youtube around is just being completely honest as honest as i can be and, and honest about art, honest about mental health, honest about myself, honest about my opinions. <clears throat> so I want to uh, continue that, even if uh, it's hard for me, even if um, I might get some negative, I might get flack for it. You know, um, people might say, you need to get help. Uh, people might say, you know, like too much information, whatever, whatever. And I don't really care at this point. <laughs> I just don't. At this point, I'm. I got bigger fish to fry, man. I don't. Your that input is just 
it's whatever who cares you know good for you that's how i feel whenever i see that nowadays it's just good for you negative input like that so anyway let's get into it so about a month ago month and a half i don't know at this point time is weird uh i went back to therapy and this was in the middle of me working on that video on this video you just watched um I think by that point I had already had the audio recorded and I was just having trouble with like the actual editing process. Uh, but talking to this new therapist of mine, uh, she told me I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. Uh, I'm sure most people are pretty familiar with post-traumatic stress disorder which you know in media and stuff it's usually categorized by like someone who has an accident in a car accident or some kind of accident and then like anything that's related to that accident sends them into a flight or fight response or they kind of freak out or something like that you know also seen like with war veterans that's most commonly associated um ptsd and war veterans people who go and fight in a war and they get traumatized and because they see something really fucked up and they come back. Um, so what's the difference between regu like regular PTSD and CPTSD? What's the complexity of it? Uh, C CPTSD, well, <clears throat> as far as I understand it, I think it usually stems from childhood trauma and compounded childhood trauma. So things that have been mounting and building up and it's usually things like not getting enough attention or um, support or um, uh, like not being taken seriously, mistreated in some way, um, all those things. And I'm not here to get into, to air out my dirty laundry in my childhood or nothing like that, but uh, just know enough things have happened in my childhood when I was a young boy that uh, affected me so so deeply that uh, I still deal with the effects to this day. Um, complex post traumatic stress disorder has um, honestly, if you're really if you are just curious and you're like, what is that? I would recommend just go on the CPTSD subreddit because those are other people who have CPTSD and they are just you know they're venting, asking questions, explaining their experience. Um, I think which would be is valuable if you're curious about it, to read some of those things. And you can get a really good sense. Not a really, a, a, like an okay sense. <laughs> I would say you get an okay sense of uh, what someone like myself has to deal with. And CPTSD is not uniform, of course. I don't think a lot of mental health stuff is. Um, and I remember I talked about depression in my depression video. And something I've learned is that um, the depression I felt was not just like standard medical depression. It's literally depression stem from CPTSD and something with my anxiety. And um, PTSD kind of puts you in a constant flight or fight response or it like puts you in that really often. And I've been in a uh, flight, fight, freeze response, one of the three, I think for the past year. So ever since I moved out of college, um, I've been in a freeze response. That's why I felt like, you know, that's kind of why some of the videos come out slow um, why I haven't really been making that much art, um, you know, why I'm kind of like hands off with a lot of things and just sort of keeping to myself. Um, that those are partially, you know, brought on by the CPTSD. Um, so when I learned that, I mean, it put a lot of things in perspective, right? As I just explained. So I've been trying to navigate that and deal with that um, they, uh, since I learned it about a month ago or so. Um, and yes, while understanding it helps, it's good to know like, okay, you know, like that, that feels good to know, that it feels validating at the same time. It's uh, also like, wow, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot that goes on in the mind. Uh, warped perceptions, warped narratives, constant vigilism, um, if that's the right word, uh, hypervigilism, always on the lookout for danger, um, stress, this just creates stress, you know, and then uh, when certain things happen, 
I go into a depressive episode of some sort. Um, and part of it, and I think PTSD too, uh, I've been experiencing something called, uh, what's it called? Like an emotional chokehold of some kind, um, where like emotional blockage where I've been bottling up the really tough emotions, the really heavy emotions in my, in myself for years because it's easier to, uh, just store it away than to, um, uh, like confront it and deal with it. Um, you know, uh, I've dealt with quite a bit of grief, which the grief has been bottled up, uh, dealt with, um, betrayal and, uh, just being hurt by other people that I bottled up. And because I bottled it up, I am, I perpetuate that narrative that I deserve it, which is not true. I do not deserve it, but I tell myself I do. I tell myself I, I deserve the pain. I tell myself that um, I'm, I have no worth in the world. Uh, you know, really, really negative narratives. Okay. And again, the purpose of me telling people is because, one, I that narrative, that same voice tells me not to, so I should. <laughs> and second, um, I think it could help people, help myself a little bit. But, um, like, I think by better illustrating my own problems and my own narrative that one day you might recognize someone in pain. You might recognize someone who's really struggling and having a really hard time. And uh, hopefully you can put aside any difficulties or hard feelings you have and um, find it in your heart to have some sympathy for that person. Because I think we're a whole generation, a lot of us in my generation especially, uh, and other ones too of traumatized people traumatized in a lot of different ways that we don't even know you know even you watching this right now you might be traumatized you don't even know <sighs> um, so yeah I think it's important to talk about I think it's important to put a face to it it's one it's okay and you know what this is not me doing this is not telling other people that you should go get on a camera and talk to the world about your 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 mental health um struggles you know like i understand you know like that's not everyone's thing it feels safer and easier to uh hide it and uh feels less scary but in my opinion i think really um the, the longer you hide it and the longer you put you store it away the more the more damaging it'll be in the long run. And uh, I think it's important to um, let it out. I think it's important to let it out. Um, no, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, was, I cried really heavily last night. It was a bit cathartic. It was painful. And I was crying over things that have happened months and years ago. And I, th I still think I have more crying to do. I have more processing to do. I have a lot of work to do. And this is part of the part of the reason why I take the stance of um, how like I don't think art is the uh, cure all for mental health um, issues because. Um, I think that they're small. I think they're very therapeutic, and I think that they can be very helpful. But it's not the cure. That alone will not um, take you to where you want to be. And so, back to the video, right? What, what I just talked about for over an hour. Um, you know who needed to hear all that? You know who I was telling 
me. I was telling myself all that. You know, I had me in mind while talking about most of that stuff. Why? Because I do like all, everything that I talked about in that video. I, I do. I spent a lot, a lot of time on uh, social media, YouTube especially. I spend, I could spend multiple hours a day on YouTube, no problem, you know. Um, I can, and I let it, and, you know, I try and fill up as much uh, space and time in my day with noise and just... You know, I don't really give myself too much time for mindfulness. That's why I made this video. Hopefully, in a way, like trying to convince myself, uh, which I have. But this is the most important thing is that when you're dealing with something like, you know, CPTSD, for example, um, some guy on YouTube is not going to be able to give you all the answers and is not going to. You know, like there's like if you're struggling with something like this, for me, like you know, because I can speak from experience, a YouTube video, forty YouTube videos, watching, you know, in sequence is not going to help. Learning why you're fucking up your art or whatever, however, whatever you're telling yourself about why your art's not good or whatever, that's probably why you came to this video trying to figure out why am I not doing good with art? What's wrong with my art? Whatever. Um, it's 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 not necessarily the art. The art, I feel like is secondary to the actual going going on in the brain um when you're traumatized when you're like dealing with years of you know whatever you've dealt with um making art will help but if you're gonna try and make it a, a career or a living i think it's really important to address the mental health issues you're facing first before you start really going all in art because the art world's unforgiving it is, you know, it's relentless, and it's um, uh, pretentious, and it's uh, very surface level a lot of the time. Uh, it's very flashy, Hollywood, New York, you know, it's superficial a lot of the time. It's very ego-driven. Um, it's exhausting if you're trying to um, genuinely tell a story like a personal story through your work and i'm not trying to say like all the people in the world are so dumb and they don't get it and you know i'm not trying to say nothing like that i'm not trying to say like artists doing art is dumb i know I, again i've talked about this before but if you're making art and it's just like i like doing the doodle thing and i just do it it's so simple you know and it's not much thought goes in it fine that's fine I, it's not a big deal like you know I've said it before, uh, I'd rather people make art than, um, than hurt people. So, Godspeed and God bless, what I say to every artist. Um, just do your thing and, you know, don't hurt other people. But you gotta understand is like, uh, in an economic art establishment, like the one we find ourselves in now, um, there's a fine line between healing art you know the art through trauma and creating art through trauma and fine art or art made for the purpose of t talking about society and deeper meanings and stuff like that there's a very small Venn middle Venn diagram <coughs> in the middle of overlap there's very little, few, little overlap um, of success in those fields the only person I can think of that found success in their lifetime with that kind of work is Daniel Johnston. He's my favorite artist ever. Daniel Johnston is my favorite artist of all time. Number one. M music. Oops. Sorry. Music and visual art philosophy. You know. Um, if you know anything about Daniel Johnston, you might be able to see some overlap between how I work or what I make and what he did, what he made. Um, you know, and there's a few others too. I'm sure, I mean, like plenty of people create through trauma. It's not just one to one, you know. It's not just you do this or you do this, but it's also like there's a fine balance, you know, there's a fine balance. Um, there's also just opportunity and luck that are major factors. Um, so, this point of this video was, uh, 
to kind of talk to the young, the younger artists, you know, the Gen Z and maybe even some of the newest, newer generation of people. I don't even know what they're called. Um, teenagers in high school, even middle school, um, young people in college, young adults just starting off fresh. You know, I didn't really make this for 30 year olds, but hey man, if you're 30, 40 years old and you're watching, you're getting some out value out of my videos, God bless you. That's, that's awesome. I don't think there's anything wrong with being in your 30s or 40s and still trying to figure your stuff out. I think that's still commendable. I don't think it makes you weak. I don't think it makes you um, done or washed up or whatever. I, I hate that. That's, you know, human life is not um, something you could just categorically say like, oh, yeah, if you're 30, you, you're done. You're cooked. You know, fuck that. That's some noise. That's noise from someone who's – I'm thinking of a specific person, but I'm not going to bring up who it is. But, yeah, people who say things like that are um, are hurt too. They're hurt too. They're really hurt. Um, and they mask it with uh, macho chauvinism, big tough guy energy, whatever. But you know they're just as hurt. They're deeply hurt. And they'll say again and again they're not. They'll say again and again they're not hurt. They, they could deal with their problems just fine. They got figured out. They're not pussies, whatever. That's what they'll say. And I'll just sit here and go, okay. Whatever you say. Um, anyway, back to my main point. The that's who, so the, the you guys are who I'm making this video for, um, and partially myself too, as I mentioned. But um, I think what's more important is rather than trying to feed the same beast that has chewed up and spit out so many artists, and is basically a money laundering scheme. Like, let's be real. Like the MoMA is just full of you know offshore bank accounts paintings connected offshore bank accounts let's be real about that and you know i just want to give people the perspective that there can be more to art than there is now artists can do more than just go be put have a painting put in a gallery and that's it called a wrap or have like i don't know i just see all these influencers on on social media art influencers or the art influencer and they just record they I don't know how they do it man I don't know how they do it they they can record themselves painting and they can they can you know do their whole thing and you know it, it, honestly talking about it, it kind of irritates me I'm not even gonna lie like thinking about it I'm just like god it's so irritating why is it irritating for me you know is it because like I wish I could do that is that like jealousy like I wish I could just set my camera up and just paint really fast or like have a speed up paint thing and be able to have expensive and nice setups and whatever you know again it's important to identify the source of your emotions so when i think about them again god bless like they're making paintings but i think there's more to art than just like putting up a work on social media and calling it a day and you know i think that there's more we can do um and that's what i'm trying to do with my discord and that theoretical app i brought up which I would still like to do at some point. That'd be really cool. But that's uh, could be a, a down the road thing because that would be really cool. I would love to just create a, a free alternative version of Instagram or for artists and just art consumers um, <clears throat> or art aficionados or people who have a strong interest in art and um, make it free and make it accessible and no strings attached. Like you don't have to do no bullshit. Just share your art, share your process, share your sketches, share your songs. Do it. You know, it doesn't have to be a competition. There's no likes or numbers, you know. Um, and it's about learning and growing and communing, communing and talking and, you know. Um, and so that's what I want. You know, that's what I want for artists is to take our work out. Because the museum's done, man. It's 2023. It's 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 just a another place where you can go look at paintings, but it's not what's happening. You know, it's not like happening, you know, like the last time we like every time we hear about art in the news, it's like people throwing soup at a painting, at a famous painting, a, re a security guard uh, drawing eyes on faceless, a faceless painting in Russia. Um, the banana, the damn banana. Just it's just like like this is just so dumb. It's like all we talk about is just ridiculous, hyperbolic shit or just mo modern art again. Like what's wrong with modern art? It's just the fucking 
it's like, well, we don't know what to make anymore, so I don't think it's quite that, but it's just like, oh, this banana on the walls of commentary about consumerism, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fucking course it is, dude. Of course it is. Yeah, duh. Like, come on. Like, shout out to the guy who ate the banana. Shout out to them. A guy or girl, I don't remember. But, um, yeah. So, again, this is real talk. We don't cut this. We don't cut the real talk. You can, you don't have to, you can watch the whole video. You don't have to watch the real talk. But if you're here for the real talk, that means, uh, you know, I don't know what it means, but it means you got patience and you, you're curious to hear what I say. So God bless you. Um, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, so I want uh, art to be healing. I want it to be inspiring. I want it to be thought provoking. I want it to be um, accessible. I want it to be open. I want it to be um, uh, free from competition as much as possible. Um, and unhealthy comp healthy competition is one thing. Unhealthy competition is another thing. And I think there's more unhealthy competition as perpetuated by social media, which is like Instagram and Twitter, than healthy competition, which you would find in a uh, actual collaborative studio, uh, residency studio, uh, a campus. Uh, university studio what have you where healthy competition is you know where where it's about hey uh this is what i'm trying to make and then people go you're at, you're doing a good job or i feel like you're not conveying your message well enough what have you um <clears throat> and so what i'm trying to do with my discord right now is i want to create that environment where um, artists from all trades and mediums can come together and talk about their work and talk about what they're trying to do and actually really critically think about what they're trying to do you know like beyond just oh i just draw for fun i just draw to make commission you know whatever like what's it doing for you what's it doing for other people people go well, i don't make art for other people and that's where it starts um because you know like we look at the genesis of art which are um cave paintings um, cave paintings and now this is becoming a lecture so I'll keep it really short but there are ways of telling stories of letting kids um, interact with adults of letting um, everyone have a, a voice of uh, adding narrative and excitement and wonder into life um, to create illusions uh, that makes the brain imagine, imagine things and be creative that, that was that was the purpose of cave paintings. It was inherently communal. Um, so what? You're going to have your own little cave and your own paintings in the cave, but just have it there for who? You to look at? Just look at it over and over again? Like, part of the appeal and interest of art is just the communal aspect. And just, you know, I look at, I see the people in my Discord, and I'm just blown away by, by y'all. I'm really blown away because... Y'all just have such skill, such skill, and just w like whimsical ways, some of you guys, all of you guys, of going about your process and your, your, and it intrigues me, you know, I'm like, damn, I just want to hear someone sit in front of me and explain to me what they're doing on their, with their paintings and their drawings and their ceramics and whatnot, I just, there's some, there's some really great stuff going on in that Discord, let me tell you, really great artists. I'm telling you guys, you guys are something else. And there's so many artists, and I can only imagine how uh, enriching and fruitful it would be if um, we just had all these s people together in one place, you know, just talking and um, about art. But part of my process is trying to learn how to foster an online environment like that and help bring people out of their shell. Like, how do you go about that? Um, and I'm still figuring out, you know, I'm... I still need some uh, out of shell time myself. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I want to take this chance before I forget to thank everyone who helped with making this video possible. Uh, I want to thank you, Andrew, because when I was writing uh, the initial scripts that I just kind of ended up using as a mental note rather than a, a read reference, but um, Andrew helped me with some of the wording and research aspects, and um, he helped me a lot with the beginning phases of this so thank you Andrew and Kyle who also looked at my writing and uh, gave me some feedback and Kyle was also in this video is one of the people I uh, interviewed and got audio clips from um, so thank you for your time and your wise words um, I also want to thank Lexi 
Lexi is uh, uh, pretty dope. Uh, she's she's she was in the video. She did the collage. She she was she was very thoughtful with her answers and was pretty vulnerable. And um, you know I'm I'm always impressed by that. Um, same with Eon. Both of you guys were very vulnerable in your experience, in your mental health experience, your connection with social media and art, and um, you guys have been very helpful to me in general <clears throat> on the server and just being good people and um, really pushing yourselves to be the artist you want to be, and I commend you both for that very much. I um, also want to thank Lisa, who also gave her time, and uh, despite the time gap, um, she was able to find the time to sit down with me and talk to me about her experience and um you know she's very honest and open and also very vulnerable so i thank you as well i also want to thank my friend cass she did all the music you heard in the video except for the transition slides where it's the donkey kong music because I, I wanted to switch it up a little bit um thank you cass you're a rock and roll star to the 10th degree and you're a great friend um and i Pretty sure there's the last person I need to thank. I want to thank Soup. Okay, Soup. Also in my Discord. Uh, everyone's stuff is linked down below, by the way. Anything, if anyone has like a social media or something they want linked below, it's all there. I'm full on credit where it's all due because it's all due. Um, uh, Soup made this awesome thumbnail. They were very, uh, they were a really great um, uh, person to work with for commission and graphic art, um, graphic design and drawing and stuff. They, they, they killed it. They did ex they did exactly what I wanted, um, and they did it in a timely manner, and they were very professional and uh, very excited and motivated um, to create the thumbnail, and I think they did a stellar job. They really kind of exceeded my expectations, so if you're trying to figure out, you know, their stuff's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty affordable, I would say, you know, if you're trying to get uh you know a drawing or something going or you just you want to commission someone hit up soup honestly anyone in the discord too just join the discord say hey i need a commission i'm sure you'll get people clawing at you <laughs> trying to get you trying to get you what you want so you know that's also another good thing that discord's for is if you want to get someone a birthday gift or a present and you might not have the most daft hand to draw or paint with and you just want someone to do that for you come to the discord and ask around people will be i know those people are more than happy to do it um, and just thank you to everyone on the Discord server, too. Just you guys have been, when I've been away, um, you guys have been really great with um, just sharing your work and supporting each other and being really positive. And you guys are just awesome. You guys are precisely, like, the kind of people I make these videos for. And, um, you know, you guys give me hope. You guys give me a lot of hope. So um, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys are really great. And... Um, Everyone who watches and subscribes and um, comments regularly and, um, you know, everyone, you know, I really appreciate you all very much. And I appreciate you guys giving me the space and the opportunity to be honest and to offer my advice and feedback, um, you know, because I, I, you know, I, I like to think I have things to say and you know, I, I, I hope it's valuable and, you know, I don't ever like to be acting like I come from a high horse or something like that. Like I'm, I'm speaking from place of, of experience and, um, just trying to find a way to help people best I can. But the main point, uh, I always have a main point, don't I? Um, I, I also just really want to emphasize the importance of getting mental health treatment too, you know, like it's not, I don't think it's good to suffer in silence or suffer alone as much as the um, voice in your head tells you that that's what is right and it compels you. But um, I think trying to really put in the work to find a professional, and if that's too hard, uh, lean on your friends uh, if they're you know available to help you with that. And if they're not, maybe your family, just someone you can trust. Um, and if there's no one in the world you can trust and you need help with ther finding a therapist or something, hit me up. I will make the time for you if you need it. Um, especially if you watched all the way up to this point in the video, like, yeah, okay, you, you've earned it. <laughs> you've heard me talk for almost two hours. So, yeah, come in the Discord, hit me up, and I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. Um, and just in general, like, if you guys, it, you know, it might be weird, but it's like 
I don't mind helping people if they need help. If if someone helps, hits me up and is like, "Hey, I need, I need advice. I need, I need feedback. I need some support." You know, I'll do it. Whatever's in my uh, uh, ability, I'll do what's in my ability. You know, but that's all I can. That's all anyone can really ask for. So, hit me up. I'm on the Discord. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just thank you for watching up to this point. Thank you for supporting thank you for your patience thank you for your understanding i just thank you for everything there's like i'm humbled i'm humbled um and i hope what i said and shared about my experience helps you somewhat and i just want you to know if things seem bleak and hopeless and dark um i promise you as someone who's been in that position several many times uh, where it feels like nothing gets better, I promise you, uh, it gets better. It will get better. Just cry. <laughs> Just cry. Just cry really hard. Cry as hard as you possibly can. Um, and, uh, you know, try and find some support and love through other people. Um, because that's, we're, you know, we're social creatures. We need people. We need each other. We really do. And that's, Again, part of the whole thing I'm trying to do is help artists not feel so alone and so um, overcome by the weight of existence and, and modern living and stuff like that. You know, like we need to be there for each other. So um, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I just I just thank you guys. Thank you guys. Really, seriously, thank you for everything. Um I don't have much else to say, but hopefully some new videos will come soon. I'm going to try and do some chiller videos, so uh, look forward to that. They'll come when they come. Um, yeah, take good care of yourself. Hit me up if you need anything. Um, you know, do your best. Do your best. You got this. Trust me, you got this. Don't worry. Okay, I'll talk to you later, guys.